So on this video we're going to run the unit as if it has just been started up. It'd be, uh, there's a configuration wizard which is a very simple step-by-step -step process of how to set the unit up uh, quite quickly and simply so you can get the unit running. It's important that if you're having a, a manufacturer's commissioning that the unit is up and running before they arrive um, because the compressor needs time to warm through uh, etc. So it's important that they're on for at least four or five hours before the engineer turns up. Uh, so we'll run this configuration wizard as if the unit has just been set up and this is what you'd be presented with when the unit starts so you're choosing your language uh, time and date year, month, etc we are happy with that system type uh, we have no backup Peter on this one but you obviously select that there if you did have one domestic got water, cylinder type this can be altered here so the different variations which we will give you on notes emergency mode whether that's going to be in manual or automatic we recommend manual uh, so the unit doesn't just run automatically uh, in emergency mode without the homeowner realizing before they have a large bill number of zones it will be a single zone Glycol field on our systems? No, uh, because we have antifreeze valves, so no need for any glycol in the system. Boost heat capacity, which is the immersion, set to 3 kilowatts. Bivalent? No, not on this. We don't have a boiler attached, so it's just a monovalent system. Click to the next section. Emitter type, so underfloor heating. If you've got a mixture of underfloor heating and radiators, um, we just recommend sticking with the underfloor heating uh, profile on this. We do design our systems to run uh, the radiator temperatures at the same temperature as the underfloor, so they should be sized appropriately if you're using our design. Control method, this is important. Um, the external room thermostat to be activated here. Um, so that is your room programmable room thermostats will be controlling the heat pump for heating demand. If none of that has been set up yet, you can either link out the um, demand cables to um, so to fool the unit into thinking that there is a demand, or you could just put it on uh, leaving water temperature, and that would just be the heat pump um, controlling the temperature, the flow temperature, and that's all it's trying to reach is just a set point flow temperature. Um, switching itself on and off. Um, set point mode, weather dependent. We 99% of the time have weather dependent set on our units. Um, fixed if you've got particularly awkward situational radiators that need to be at a certain set point, but typically you'd, you'd want to try and take advantage of the weather dependence curve. Scheduling on the main zone, no, because we're not actually using the programmer at all on this. So Weather dependent curve, we've gone for the two point system here. You can have slope offset or two points, we've gone for the two. So this is where you can program or put input the data of your um, weather dependent curve. So typically let's say 45 degree maximum we want there, 30 degree maximum we want there, minus two, for our 45 degree maximum and plus 15 for our 30 degrees so in this instance 15 degree outside temperature or above the underfloor will be set on or sorry the flow temperature will be set at 30 degrees at minus 2 it would raise to 45 and then you have the slope in between the varying different temperatures as it modulates moving on to tank mode. This is where you should decide whether you would like just to program it only or schedule and reheat or reheat only. We've got other videos explaining what those actually are. Comfort set points, so the maximum domestic hot water temperature you, you want to achieve on the comfort. Eco set point, your reheat set point and the hysteresis value for reheat which is the temperature difference. So reheat is a 24 hour domestic hot water schedule and it is governed by this degree temperature drop before it recharges back to 45. So it dropped to 35 to recharge back to 45. 
and then we press OK. The unit will drop off and synchronize all of those settings. And then once that's synchronized, the unit should be up and running. So you can either set uh, domestic hot water to on, or um, you can put demand on on your heating, and the unit should run up. Um, perhaps give it a few minutes sometimes. Um, units don't always run straight away. Sometimes they've got a bit of a delay timer. Um, but we have another video to see how and if you have activators running and sensors running to see what the heat pump's actually doing in real time.